diplomat was strip searched after her arrest in the US has got the establishment here very very angry so much so that a whole range of measures including recalling american or the diplomats here their ids revoking their privileges like their privilege to import things they all have been put in place opposition leader yashwant sinha even suggested that as a tit for tat partners of us diplomats should also be arrested now that homosexuality is again banned on agenda we are asking are these measures the right thing to do or are they an overreaction we'll be going to our pundits including ronan sen pharma envoy in just a bit first let's take a look at exactly what the us and india what india has suggested The Delhi police removing barricades outside the US embassy part of retaliatory measures taken by India as details of Devyani Khobrigade's arrest became public she was strip searched swabbed for DNA and shared a jail cell with drug addicts a furious indian government has recalled the id cards of all staff and families of us consulates in india cards that give them full diplomatic immunity India wants to know what salaries are paid to all Indian staff employed in US consulates. Sources say since US consulates are technically US territory, then all Indian staff here should be paid American wages. All airport passes for consulates and embassies have been withdrawn. India has also asked for the visa details of all teachers working at US schools here and what they're being paid along with their bank account details. This is to determine if they're paying tax or not. And all import clearances for the American embassy have been stopped. for us completely unacceptable we have put in motion what we believe uh, would be effective way of of uh, uh, of addressing this issue uh, but also in motion such steps that need to be taken to protect her dignity the home minister rahul gandhi and narendra modi all cancelled their meetings with the visiting us congressional delegation in protest former foreign minister yashwant sinha went as far as to suggest the invocation of section 377 on us diplomats in india my suggestion to the government of india is the media has reported that we had issued visa to a number of us uh, diplomats companions companions means that they are same sex now the, after the supreme court ruling it is completely illegal in our country just as paying less wages was illegal in the us so why doesn't the government of india go ahead and arrest all of them apart from the way devyani khobragade was treated there is the issue of whether she broke us law by paying her domestic help less than the minimum wage indian officials insist this is a gray area and that if indeed the law was broken why did the us embassy give the domestic help a visa at all knowing full well that the minimum wage was actually more than devyani's own salary they also insist that the help was not exploited her medical insurance food lodging and travel for home for vacation were all paid for by the indian government the question though is If diplomats can't afford to pay their domestic help US salaries under US law then why hire them at all in New Delhi Nidhi Razdan for NDTV And so um, the first question our first talking point is are India's retaliatory measures appropriate let's me also introduce our two pundits on this issue we have Ronan Sen former diplomat uh, Indian ambassador to the US he's of course saying that yes these are India should do a lot more But taking a contrary position, we have Pramit Pal Chaudhary, who is a member of the NSAB and also foreign editor of the Hindustan Times. Mr. Ronson, first, you, why do you think these measures India should do a lot more, and why these measures may be appropriate? I think all these measures have been uh, carefully calibrated, and uh, uh, they are appropriate, uh, and uh, and they are proportionate. And they are proportionate they are proportionate uh, with the exception i don't know i, I don't think that's uh, whether this is a part of the package but uh, uh, you know of the removal of the barricades because if the if we put them up in the first place because it's a job of any host country to provide uh, that's point that omar of the law also yeah, made it is it is oh i didn't know that so but but basically that's a, it's a fundamental duty of any receiving do you think india should do that. more you've seen the measures that they've taken today do you think they should do no, more no i think it's uh, it's adequate adequate pramit uh, pal choudhury mm-hmm. why do you think that this may be a bit of an overreaction well i think what we need to keep in mind is that the west way to d- do diplomatic retaliation is strict reciprocity 
So if they've taken a deputy consul general of ours and put her behind bars, then that's the best way we should respond. We should also take one of their deputy consul generals, put them behind bars. The question that I have is that when you start to break away from reciprocity, so in other words, you break the pattern of response, you then means that the other side doesn't know how to respond. If they start to do the same thing, uh, you then get into a period of escalation in which neither side can really match the other because you're not responding directly to what they do. So the best way to, now my view would have been to take the deputy consul general of, I don't know, Chennai or something, and it, it have hit them and for a traffic really violation. And you don't need oh, for a traffic violation. Anything. Which I mean, is what happens matter. with it's Pakistan. Easy, it's very easy to find something wrong. You go to the car and the policeman will find that, yeah, the exhaust pipe's not is crooked. Put him in jail for 24 hours and say, look, exact reciprocity. Right. We're not breaking away from this pattern. We're not doing anything that you didn't do to us. What's the problem with what they've done now? Well, the, my problem is that if the Americans, you, if you start to break away from reciprocity, then you start to get into a pattern where neither side knows how exactly to, s you don't want to get into escalation. That's mm -hmm. the core of this. Ultimately, this is, you know, you have a big geopolitical concerns. You have a big strategic relationship. You're not interested in having this relationship go off a cliff over what is diplomatically still a relatively minor matter in the larger picture of things. But if you decide to go break away from reciprocity, it confuses the other side. They don't know exactly how are they going to respond to this. If they decide to respond in the same manner, or they decide to break away and do something completely different, yes. then you start to get into a series of escalation because of a misunderstanding on both sides. And what you really want to be doing is sending a message, what you did is unacceptable. We're going to do exactly the same thing. Yes. Uh, so when do you but want to end this? The problem may be that you're saying it's a minor thing, which you wouldn't agree that this is minor, right? No, it's not, it's not minor. Uh, I'm not getting. And, and just for our audience's yes. perspective, you of course know Devyani very well. She joined. Um, uh, you know, she you would have been her boss when she joined. Yes, she. Uh, when I was ambassador in Berlin, uh, she had come as uh, officer trainee. That was her first assignment, and uh, and uh, so I happen to know her, and uh, as a person also, and I know. Uh, how she treated her domestic assistant, but these are actually peripheral issues. The legal issue is not the main thing, but reciprocity, I want to point out, reciprocity, you know, if we had arrested a deputy consul general, that would have been retaliation. We are not talking of retaliation. Okay. You're talking of reciprocity. So what you should do is something in But principle. aren't we talking of retaliation? No, Isn't I don't the think that there is something, no, words, no, 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 it's not Shunde's a question of words. badla and all that. No, absolutely wrong. What you are talking about is that you have made a unilateral interpretation of the Vienna Convention on Consular Services. Let's not, you know, she is a consular agent. A diplomat is someone different. Yes. Uh, that is different. That is, you're talking, but the consular. We'll go into that in a little yeah, bit. But yeah. I don't want to go into the legality. What had happened, the manner in which it was done, you know, this arrested, handcuffed, uh, taken into custody, strip search, there were cavity searches also, put into a cell with all kinds of hardened criminals. These things are not done. In what about what Pramit is suggesting, that you also do it with another one of no, their but officers? Then, no, but then you have to, then would seem like a retaliation. It will be very crude. What you can do something which you this apply is, across removing, the board. But removing barricades isn't crude, sir? No, removing barricades, uh, as I said, you know, I have, I, I, I don't know the, uh, the circumstances, which, because it's a basic duty to put barricades, remove them. It is not a question of what they are demand, because it's a question of our assessment yes. of the threat and yes. how to meet that threat. Yeah, because okay, and actually our barricades, one is our second talking point as well. Mm -hmm. We know that uh, Ronan Sen talked about, Pramit, we know that yeah. Ronan Sen also said that yes, we need uh, more of a reaction, but <laughs> barricades he wasn't quite sure about. What do you make of that? Some of these measures, specific measures that they've been taking, taking back all their, recalling their IDs, the barricades right. being removed, what do you make of that? Well, as he said, we're, we're now in a 
we are doing it. I mean, uh, the ambassador has said that it's not retaliation, though it kind of looks like retaliation to me. But I guess it's a question of finesse here. But yes, the, the question of the barricades is that if you've put the barricades, presumably you've done this because you have a security assessment. Yes. That's why you've put them there in the first place. And if, if anybody's going to Chinakipuri, there are barricades all over the place. All of the sensitive embassies have barricades. They have barbed wire. And, there's a, there's a, there, and they're basing that on our security assessment. I mean, it's because IB or, or D, Delhi police is going there, so we think you need these. Uh, often in conjunction with their intelligence services. So if we're removing it, I presume it's because we don't believe there's a security threat, which I find very hard to believe, um, given, uh, given our own experiences. Are we taking the privilege away? Well, is it a privilege? Because as you said, it's actually a duty. Uh, we, yes. We, uh, yes. Our, our embassies overseas are defended very strongly because we are under constant terrorist threat. I mean, America, us, Israel, uh, there's only five or six countries which are at the top end of the terrorism target list, and we're those five countries. Yes. Um, so uh, there's a reason why that exists. So I, I have to admit, I'm a little puzzled. Uh, either they've assumed that there is no security threat, which I find hard to believe, uh, or they're getting a little carried away here. Okay.